Hey, also on your website, uh, Mike Schoen for Congress, you have uh, decreasing the power of the federal government. What kind of, why is that a problem? Well, it goes back to this biological law called the biological imperative. They're going to get bigger and bigger, like cancer, until we die, and that's what's happening now. Oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta do this for you. We gotta do that for you. You know, uh, if you're an old person in a wheelchair, we'll search the heck out of you before you get on the airplane. Uh, they are going to find an excuse to increase their power, which means decreasing our power. So you got to decrease their power. You got to say no to the federal government, uh, and then you got to start chipping away at the power they do have and giving freedom back to uh, individuals like you and I. Uh, it's not going to uh, happen uh, with the attitude that we have today. We'll have to have people who are not only understand the federal government is our enemy in this respect, but have the intelligence to figure out where to chip, to chip away at them and decrease their power. Now your 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 opponent, your primary opponent is Ben Quayle. It's ben Quayle. Ben Quayle, the son of the former vice president Dan Quayle. And he would pro and how would you feel about his ability to be able to chip away at the federal power, or his inability to chip away at the federal power? Well, I think any first term congressperson doesn't have a lot of ability to do anything, but over time you can do something. Uh, what he the problem with uh, my Republican opponent is that. He, he's very good saying, well, I'm going to, uh, the federal government is out of hand, but, uh, and we're going to decrease the power of the federal government. He more or less says that. The problem is he also says, oh, yeah, but we're not going to uh, decrease, we're not going to take any uh, uh, expenditures away from the military industrial complex. We're not going to fiddle with that at all. And so, and then he's completely unspecific on where he's going to take the money from and, and how he's going to cut down the power of the, the, uh, the uh, federal government. You have to understand that the power of the federal government is closely hooked up to power of corporations. It's gigantic financial interests that have the, you could say, lobbying control of our federal government. So. When you're, and those gigantic financial interests, uh, you could say conspire or join forces with uh, the people in power in the federal government because they need a lot of money to get elected and, and they owe favors. So, um, uh, so you've, got to, uh, you've got to attack both the size of the federal government and powers of corporations to affect what the federal government does. You've got the gigantic uh, uh, armament industries and so-called defense and security industries uh, mm -hmm. companies that profoundly affect what our federal government does, what our intelligence organizations say or do. So uh, you've got to attack them both. As a congressman, what would you do? Well, as a congressman, uh, I'd first knock on Ron Paul's door and say, what, should, what are you doing? And, and let's, you tell me what's going on here and who we have to say no to. The second thing, realistically, because I'm talking realistically as a uh, freshman or just one Congress person, uh, I would educate my constituents. And I would, uh, in, in, uh, in conversations like this, I would explain to people what's going on in specific instances. Uh, an important one we've, we've covered earlier today is, is the one of, of new manufacturing. That's where money comes from. You know, Switzerland and Germany, they don't have much of a military, and they don't have much <coughs> of a government uh, compared to ours, a, a percentage of expenditure. But they have, they have a nice lifestyle, and they have a lot of wealth for the normal person. And that's what I think we want to accomplish here. Uh, we want to, uh, what I would like to accomplish is to talk to people about whether we want to have a state that's an entrepreneurial state or what you might call a mercantile state, or do we want to have a warfare state? How are we going to acquire wealth? 
Are we going to go around the world and strong arm people with, with militarism and say, hey, we kind of like uh, your natural resources, but sure like to have some of this. I guess we're going to take it. Or should we be like some other countries of the world and say, look, by golly, we made a lot of stuff here. We have a lot of, of uh, uh, quality products, including some service products. And we'll trade you what we've got for what you've got, and we won't waste your time trying to, trying to hassle you with uh, some sort of militarism or war. And that's the approach that uh, China's taking. Of course, they're, they're very different than, say, Germany or Taiwan or Switzerland. But that's the approach that all those four countries are taking, and it's an approach that, that lasts. The approach of militarism and, and acquiring someone else's wealth through coercion, that is not sustainable. People get ticked off about it, and they find a way to stop you over time. Uh, and it's also, uh, uh, you. I don't think there's a lot of people watching this, uh, and I know I don't, feel very good about stealing something from someone. I don't really like to do that. I don't want to do it. I don't feel proud about it. And uh, I'm not going to sleep well if I've done that. I want to be proud of my life, proud of what I've done. I know you do too. As your congressman, I would continue to educate my constituents. I would continue to educate fellow congress uh, persons about this very issue. And like Ron Paul, I would say no, no, no to continuing attempt and f giant freight train that's running at a high speed of the military-industrial government complex. But I don't.